Hello, this is another one of my videos on Sheikhism, this one dealing with Syed Kazem Rashti, uh, his students, and his connection to the Barbies. It comes from a long article by Amin Neshrafi in Encyclopedia Iranica on uh, Kazem Rashti. It first came out in 2013. It's available both in print and online. Uh, Amin Neshraki uh, got his PhD in Islamic Studies from the University of Frankfurt and is a lecturer in Persian and Contemporary Iranian Religious Thought in Geisen and Frankfurt and Maine. Uh, he's the author of a monograph in German uh, which translates as Oli Sheikhi and Barbie Theology, which was published by Brill in 2004. Uh, so, Sed Kazem Rashti, uh, I've already talked about uh, the basic uh, details of his life, uh, including uh, the unknown nature of his date of birth, with a wide range of uh, possibilities, and uh, noted that after Sheikh Ahmed's uh, death, then he became the successor and head of the Sheikhi uh, movement. Over the years, he was teaching in Karbala, uh, Sheikh Kazem must have had hundreds of students, uh, but we have no idea uh, who most of them were. Um, there is a list of some of the better known students, uh, which is available. Uh, since he did appoint a successor, numerous claims to leadership were raised after his death. Uh, the most prominent of whom was Haji Muhammad Karim Khan Kermani, who became the head of the group subsequently known as the Kermani Sheikhis. He seems to have enjoyed a special rank amongst Rashti's students and was therefore accepted as leader by a large number of sheikhis, especially in Kerman. Other claimants included Mirza Hassan Goha in Karbala uh, and Mirza Mohit uh, Kermani, the teacher of Rashti's sons, as well as uh, Muhammad Chapi Tabrizi in Azerbaijan. Mirza Muhammad Khorasani became the leader of yet another branch in Tehran. We should also note that uh, Rashti left two sons, Ahmad and Hassan. The latter was a student of his father and of Mirza Mohit Karmani. He later moved to Hamadan. Uh, as to Ahmed, he was killed in 1878-79 on his way home from the shrine of the Imam Hussein. Neither of his sons uh, seems to have enjoyed special significance amongst the Sheikhis. Apparently, none of these various Sheikhi leaders have the charisma and authority of Sheikh Ahmed and Sheikh Qasem, and therefore, from this point in history onwards, the Sheikhi movement became irreversibly divided into several offshoots. These various Sheikhi uh, factions remain in existence until today and differ not only in questions of leadership, but also in certain points of doctrine, for example, the doctrine of the fourth pillar or fourth support, which is held by the Karmani branch but not shared uh, by other groups. A number of prominent Sheikhis also joined the movement of the Bab. A few months after Rashti's death, the Bab had put forth his somewhat ambiguous claim to be the fourth pillar or to be a new manifestation of the divine Logos. In fact, the earliest and most prominent Barbies were almost all former students of Rashti. Amongst the prominent Sheikhis who became Barbies were Mullah Muhammad Hussein Bushrui, uh, whom Rashti had sent to negotiate with Muhammad Baba Shafti, and who was successful in securing the latter's support for the Sheikhis and uh, later played a major role in the Babi movement. Uh, the well known Kuraswain uh, Tahare, the poetess, and also uh, Muhammad Ali Qudus Bafarushi, uh, Sheikh Ali Toshisi Azim, uh, Mullah Ali Bastani, and Mullah Sadek Mukalas Khorasani, also a lot of uh, lesser known uh, Sheikhs who became uh, involved with the Babi movement. As to the Bab's own contact with the Sheikhs, uh, we know that prior to the commencement of his prophetic career, the Bab had spent some time in Karbala in the early 1840s, where he came into contact with Sheikhis. 
it's sometimes reported that he also attended uh, classes uh, and seminars uh, with the Cheikis. In some of his earliest writings, he referred to Rashti as his teacher and master. However, given that the Bab only had rudimentary education, as attested to by both his family and contemporary adversaries and sympathizers, it seems highly unlikely that he could have attended, uh, say, Kazem's classes, uh, given the hierarchical structure of traditional seminaries. According to traditional accounts, uh, the Bab uh, had uh, been denied formal education at an earlier point of his life due to his lack of knowledge of the most basic Islamic sciences. The purpose of the Bab statement might then have been to show his nearness to the Sheikhi leader and to support his own claim to authority. In any case, his writings display intimate knowledge of the Sheikhi terminology and doctrine, which is at least most remarkable, even if one were to accept the traditional account that he attended classes for about a year. Babi and Baha'i writers refer to a strong messianic element in early Sheikhi teachings. Occasionally, the efforts of the two Sheikhs, that's Sheikh Ahmad and Sir Kazem, are reduced to preparing people for the immediate advent of the Mahdi. Such a claim is certainly not justified by their, by their writings, which contain few and then very vague and obscure references to some sort of messianic figure or event. One such example occurs uh, towards the end of the Shah al Qasida, in which uh, Zed Kazem says that the inaugurator of the future cycle of revelation is now present, that his name is Ahmad and that he himself knows everything about him, but cannot divulge his true identity. That's quoted in various sources. However, the fact that many sheikhs converted to the Bab's new religion might in itself be an indication that some sort of expectation prevailed, even though the true nature of that expectation, the actual Mahdi or only his representative, is still unclear. Further research into early Sheikhi writings and the correspondence between Babi converts and their former Sheikhi colleagues may shed further light on this question. There is a strong possibility that at least Rashti had entertained certain expectations into which he had initiated some of his students orally rather than in writing. Sometimes uh, the fact that Rashti didn't leave a testament nominating his successor is interpreted as being itself an anticipation of a messianic event. And uh, the author notes that Vahid Rafati argues that uh, Rashti does at least allude to the imminent advent of the Mahdi. On the other hand, the fact that most Sheikhis did not join the Bab or any other messianic movement is a strong indication that the alleged messianic spirit had not reached the majority of its members, but was rather confined to a select few. That many Sheikhis did convert to the Babi movement might also be due to certain elements of their doctrine, which deviates from traditional 12 Shiism. For example, the idea of an absolute representative of the hidden Imam, who can be known even during the occultation the rather complex theory about life after death, and the belief that the Mahdi might return in a different body, and the focus on the Imams as manifestations of the divine. In short, a more esoteric approach towards certain questions of Imamology and theology in general allowed for the Bab to develop his own ideas in the framework of Sheikhism rather than in traditional 12th of Shi discourse, which upholds a belief in the physical reappearance of the 12th Imam and doesn't believe in any representatives during the great occultation. Another important factor in the Bab's gravitation towards Sheikhism must have been the general longing for change that existed in 19th century Iranian society and was no doubt stronger with members of an already unorthodox and somewhat innovative group. 
So, um, thank you for listening, and particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Uh, you're very welcome to support my channel if you so wish. Please do like, comment, and share on the videos. It really does help. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. I'll give Patreon and PayPal links below in case you want to give practical support. Next week, we'll talk about uh, Dennis Herman and uh, his account of the early development of Shakespeare's have a good day.